I'm live. I'm a little late. My apologies. I'll tell you why I'm not. I've got a good reason. It's a very good reason. Get the questions going. Come on, open. There we go. And here we go. In three, two, one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. Oh, that's good. All right, cool. Questions. Um, so I thought we were ready uh, to do uh, a live test of some new software, something that we're going to be using for more Arts Radio Live which allows for multiple cameras and bringing, uh, you know, putting web pages on the screen. Good morning, Stacy. Uh, images and showing you the computer. So just, it, it, it's gonna give us a lot more uh, interaction. And I thought I had it ready to go. And just before I was ready to go live, it kind of went, no, I'm not gonna work right now. So I got, oh, I had to spend more time with it. Um, but it's a cool piece of software, so I'm excited. So what else? What else going on? So yesterday, what was yesterday? Yesterday, yesterday I had two phenomenal interviews. Um, somebody who's been part of the martial arts radio community for a, a while, years. Someone who says they've listened to every single episode, which just blows my mind. There's so many. Uh, and then uh, a guest who I, I remembered his name, but I couldn't place where, and so started looking a few minutes before we recorded it. Oh yeah, there was a magazine cover that I remembered from years ago that he was on. And that was just a phenomenal conversation. I had a great time talking to him. So between the two, Tuesday was a good day. Hope your Tuesday was good. What else? Went for a walk, cleaned up the house a bit. Laundry. Email, lots of email. Um, did some client work. That's pretty much what today is. More client work. You know, not being able to send product to Amazon is really, really tough right now. I mean, it just means I can't do anything on that side of the business. And I feel really bad for our warehouse because um, that's all they do. They send stuff to Amazon for people. I think we're their only client that has a website and sells directly. And let's be honest, nobody's buying anything on that right now. Um, Still snow on the ground, which feels weird after there being none the other day. I don't know. What else? What else can I share? I feel like being inside and having these routines that we're all in leaves a lot less to talk about, which is unfortunate. Hey, I don't want to talk about quarantine, pandemic, and politics because that's not. It's not what this show is about, nor is that what I want my life to be about. Oh, I mentioned yesterday on the show those two bonus episodes that we put out, and uh, those got some good attention, and, and I hope they were helpful. Um, yeah. Five years, and then I do two bonus episodes on the same night. Who knows when I'll do more, but... There was stuff that needed to be said. What's going on today? I'm supposed to have lunch with a friend, but there's nowhere to have lunch. So I think we're going to cancel that. Um, 
have a phone call with someone who's heading up a Whistlekick project at nine, I believe we're talking. And then I will be coaching CrossFit tonight via, via Zoom, via remote connection. I think that's all that's going on. So let's get into the questions. Let's let's see what you guys wrote in. And remember, drop it below. I'll answer it tomorrow. <laughs> Exercise is king. Nutrition is queen. Put them together and you've got a kingdom. Jack LaLanne. Well, if you know anything about Jack LaLanne, you know that if he is making some comment about health, we should listen. I mean, what the guy was, what did he, didn't he like swim the, the English Channel at, at like 80 or something or ridiculous? Um, the guy lived a long life. Um, he was a big fan of juice, the Jack LaLanne Power Juicer. You might remember that product. Oh, I got a sneeze code. <laughs> and there it goes. Nope. No sneeze. So, exercise and nutrition. I mean, I think we know that, right? We all know that these are important things. We just don't do them. And it makes it harder to do them when you're stuck inside because we want to be, we want to eat comfort food and exercising is hard. But we won't be stuck inside forever. And it doesn't mean you can't move. It doesn't mean you can't walk around your house like a crazy person. Just walk. Get some steps in. Do some push-ups. Pick some things up and put them down. But I think that the toughest part for a lot of us stuck inside is being in such close proximity to all of our food. And not knowing, not being able to resist the temptation of having all this food and often being bored. I mean, that's my challenge. Well, here are a few tricks that I use to uh, keep myself from eating constantly, like I want to. Um, staying hydrated. The same sector of the brain that controls hunger controls thirst. So if you think you're hungry, and logically you say, I really shouldn't be hungry right now. Maybe you're thirsty. Have a big glass of water, wait at least 20 minutes, and check again. If you're still hungry after 20 minutes, or yeah, if you're still hungry after 20 minutes, then you're probably still hungry, or actually hungry. Uh, brushing your teeth after a meal. Nobody wants to eat after they brush their teeth. Toothpaste just kind of, yeah, wants to put food on top of that. Um, Getting involved in something. A lot of times, hunger really just comes from boredom. And if you can try not to be in the habit of snacking while you watch TV or a movie, then oh, your body won't associate eating with that those times. That's one of the big challenges because, you know, I sit down and I'm watching TV and I think, you know, it'd be nice to have whatever. You know, some crackers or something right now. And I go and I get those. And the next time I'm watching TV, my body thinks, hey, last time we did this, you had some crackers. And if I do that constantly, then that becomes a lot of calories just piling on just because of the habit. And then I think the, the last thing. A lot of people tend to look at health as an all or nothing. It's not. I think most of us who are stuck inside most of the time, not able to go to the gym or train the way we want to, are aware that we're probably going to come out of this with, uh, with a few extra pounds, maybe with some degradation of skill. You can control that. You can stem the bleeding, if it will. If it were, there you go. You don't have to 
say, well, you know, because I'm going to put on a pound, I might as well put on 20. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Just keep that in mind. Exercise is king. Nutrition is queen. Put them together and you've got a kingdom. To eat is a necessity, but to eat intelligently is an art. Francois de la... Ooh, there's a the name. Rochefoucauld. Francois de la Rochefoucauld. Okay. To eat is a necessity, but to eat intelligently is an art. What's intelligent eating? I think, there, I think you could define that in a few different ways, but I would say it's... Nutrition first, taste second, or, yeah, nutrition first, um, quantity second, maybe, taste third. It's not hard to make food taste good. It really isn't. But to say that every meal you have, everything has to taste as good as possible, that's just silly. So I've talked about the, the shake, the pile of stuff I put in a, a shaker bottle each day. It doesn't taste good. I put a couple things in to make it taste a little better, but it doesn't taste good. But it makes me feel good. And that's more important. Taste lasts, what, seconds? Health lasts longer? It's about priorities. There are a lot of things that I use to take healthy food and make it taste better. Sriracha sauce is one of them. It does have some sugar, but it doesn't have a lot and you don't use a lot. Uh, soy sauce. Um, what's another one? Red Hot or Tabasco, you know, any of your hot sauces. Are a good choice. Lemon juice, lime juice, depending on what I'm cooking. Salt, pepper. <laughs> food is what keeps you alive. Better food helps you live a better life. It just, it just is. It just, you just got to deal with it. good coffee. I didn't have quite enough regular caffeinated coffee and I didn't feel like grinding more so I put in a, a little bit of decaf and so now now I've got a coffee blend going on. It's good. Oh, where's my button? One more. This is from Jim Rohn. Take care of your body it's the only place you have to live. There are people out there, I have friends like this, who are not willing to put in the work to take care of their body, to, to be healthy, and they They make excuses. They try to justify it with all these silly things. And it's so funny to, and I used to, to argue. I used to have conversations about it and push back because I cared about them and their health. And I don't, I don't anymore. If someone chooses to eat poorly and not move and not train and make excuses for it. I can't change that. One of the things I'm really proud of, not publicly proud of, but when I, when I, I think of things that I'm, I'm, I'm proud of myself for, that I'm grateful for, is that as I continue to get older, 
I keep learning. I keep learning about health and nutrition and uh, finding new ways to improve my physical body. And here I am, 40, soon to be 41. Wow, that's weird. And I'm in the best shape of my life. I have less white hair in my beard than I did a couple years ago. I have less body fat. I'm stronger. Uh, I have fewer mobility injury things. I, uh, I've developed new skills in martial arts. I've learned new things. I am objectively in better health now than I was in my 20s. Not because I was in bad health, but because I keep finding ways to take care of my body. And there's this perception in society that as you age, your health has to fall off a cliff. Some people say it's at 30, some people say it's at 40. One of the things I'm happiest about is that early on in my CrossFit career, I met a man who was 55 years old and was in phenomenal shape. And he went to the CrossFit Games. Um, he was in the CrossFit space anyway. Uh, top, what did they bring out? Top 20 people in the world from age 55 to 60, you know, in terms of CrossFit. And so watching the way he worked out, watching the way he approached exercise and recovering and doing everything made a lot of sense to me. And so I modeled a lot of what he did. So shout out to Alan. Uh, I don't know that he realized how much he taught me, but he taught me quite a bit. And so I look at him and I look at where he was at 55 and I figure, I've got at least another decade of getting better. So anybody who looks at themselves in the mirror and says, you know, my best days are behind me, forget that. And if this was a different kind of show, I'd be using some expletives. Forget that. You can continue to get better. If you make excuses, you won't. If you take ownership of yourself and your body and what you're putting into it and what you're doing with it, you can. And it doesn't happen overnight. I look at myself in the mirror and I look at how the, the physical routines I'm on are changing my body. And it's been, we're coming up on three years that I've been working on this and adding muscle and losing body fat. But here's the benefit of it taking so long. I've built this habit. This is not going away. I didn't crash diet. I didn't live in the gym six days a week to try and get these results. I continued to live my life. I made small changes that work. And because I've made small changes, I'm going to be that much more likely to keep up with what I'm doing. Habits take time to implement. And if you identify one thing at a time that you want to change, and you work on it for a month, it's more likely to stick. You could pick one thing right now. What's one thing right now that would take very little time? Uh, for example, I'm gonna give you a, a couple things right now. Um, I've mentioned, I think I've mentioned on this show that there's a book brewing and it's around 12 simple, very uh, easy, not time consuming, inexpensive things that people can do to improve their, their health and their lives. And I'm playing with some different formats, but the idea is that you'll get a new one each month in this book. And then the rest of the book will be um, understanding why each of those things is important. And maybe it's even a 365 page book. So here's the first one. One of them that, that worked really well for me. My first meal of the day is a cup of coffee or a cup of tea with a couple hundred calories of butter or coconut oil and some MCT oil. Cost me less. There's all kinds of evidence showing that starting your day with fat is beneficial. It gets your body to recognize that fat is the thing that it want, that it should be processing first. Um, of course, having a couple hundred calories is, is far less than most people are going to have for their first meal. 
and there's even some benefit in combining caffeine and fat. It saves you money, it takes less time, and then my first solid meal is somewhere between 10 and noon, depending on how I feel and what's going on for the day. Great. You could do that. Here's another easy one. When you go to the store, where do you usually park? The closest space you can get. What could you do? Park on the other side of the parking lot. If you add up that movement over the course of a year, that's a lot of steps. Those steps add up. Do they do anything on a day-to-day -day basis? Absolutely not. But over a month-to-month, -month, year basis, it's steps. What do steps do? Walking helps digestion. It helps all the, phys all the biological processes. Maybe not all of them. It helps a number of biological processes in the body. You're healthier. Burn a few extra calories. That translates to a pound or two, right? Small things add up. Look for opportunities to implement small things. So while we've stopped doing the homework on this show, I'd like you to consider coming up with some small thing that you commit to doing during the rest of this quarantine. What can you do in your limited space, but probably your enhanced or more available time? Try it. stuff. So I'm going to leave you with that. Remember, if you have questions, if you have comments about martial arts or health and fitness or what's going on in my life, I saw a question come up. Have I ever roasted my own coffee? No. I looked into it once. It's intriguing to me. Um, here's the concern. I would drink way more coffee. I'm trying to cut back on my coffee. Not, I'm not, I have no desire to cut it out. I love coffee. But to go from drinking all the coffee I want, which is what I was doing, to one, maybe two cups a day. Yeah. Fun fact, um, so last night for dinner, I cooked something I'd never cooked before because when I went to the grocery store a week and a half ago, um, when chaos was starting to ensue and people were buying everything in sight, the only frozen vegetable that was there it was okra. Now, I've had okra before, but I've only had okra in, like, barbecue restaurants. And they deep fried it, and I didn't even know what the okra tasted like. But I said, this will be a fun challenge, so I bought a couple bags of frozen okra. And as it was cooking, because I'm a nerd, I read about okra. And it is possible, apparently, to use the seeds and grind them up as some manner of coffee substitute. I can't imagine. It tastes very good, but thought I would share that with you. Uh, and by the way, how did I prepare the okra? Pan fried it, drained off as much of the, the gooey, weird, slimy liquid that came out of it as possible, and used a ton of Montreal steak seasoning, and just cooked it down, and it was actually really good. Montreal steak seasoning it doesn't have to just be for me. Most of you know that I eat fish, no red meat, pork, chicken, uh, but I use Montreal steak seasoning on a lot of stuff and it works really well. So, that's what I got for you today. I'll be back tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube as we are every weekday. If you haven't subscribed, turn on notifications so you can get that buzz about what we're doing as well as all the other shows that we do, Martial Arts Radio, Mondays and Thursdays, and special edition shows like like went live yesterday and whatever else we upload. If you have a question, if you have a comment, leave it below. I will answer it tomorrow. And uh, I think that's it. So I hope you have a fantastic day. Whatever you're doing, crush it. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Peace.